Greetings and welcome to In-Depth, I'm DK Ronstar. We recently observed World Kidney Day on March 9, and the theme, Kidney Health for All, preparing for the unexpected, supporting the vulnerable, remains very timely. We are going to be speaking with a member of the Kidney Recipient Support Group of TNT, VJ Nanku, and Medical Director, National Organ Transplant Unit of the NCRHA, Dr. Kimani White, who will help us discuss this further. Thank you so much for joining us, gentlemen. I want to start off with you, please, Mr. Nanku. How does the support group of Trinidad and Tobago help persons? Where do they, where do they normally find you on their journey? Um, most of the times we find persons through the uh, NOTU, um, from the recipient side of things. Um, when they actually do the transplant and stuff like that, we reach out. Some of our social services, uh, we interact with the team and we meet persons to get them on board to communicate and assist in that manner. All right, thank you so much. And Dr. White, in terms of finding people where they're at, what are some of your experiences in terms of interacting with clients, patients? Uh, we've had conversations before where individuals have said they've had no symptoms, they just uh, just found out during a routine medical. What what? What are some of those experiences you have on your side? Well, first, thanks for having me. Thanks for this opportunity to promote kidney health. Um, it's something that we're trying to advance now that we at the NCRJ have incorporated the National Organ Transplant Unit under our umbrella. Um, so all the, it was the 9th of March, uh, World Kidney Day, and that's, that happens every year, the second Thursday of March. Um, so we just try to generally promote good kidney health. As, as you mentioned, um, well, about 10% of the population will have some elements of kidney disease and it gets worse as you get older. And the thing is that the symptoms, uh, they actually present pretty late in the disease. You can lose about 90% of your kidney function before you start having the features that you can detect. So it's, it's important to have programs like this where we can promote that awareness and let people know that, you know, there are things that you ought to do to look at these very important organs, you know. Um, so staying healthy, staying active, staying fit, um, keeping up with your medicals. And of course, if you have any risk factors, you know, you, you accelerate the testing, whether it's obesity or cigarette smoking, perhaps you're diabetic or hypertensive. Um, you know, those are the things that you look out for while you would want to have a keener eye looking for kidney disease. Now, you said something at the start of your response, Dr. White, and I think it's important and we can go back to that. Because I think sometimes when people hear kidneys, many times they hear kidneys is because they're boxers and somebody hits them uh, shot by his kidneys or something like that. But when you talk about kidney health, let's start from the basics. What are kidneys responsible for? So the uh, immensely important organ. So, I mean, the the... the Obvious thing, the easy thing is your salt and your water balance, keeping the, the elements in your body just in the right concentration, so to speak, um, for your body to function normally. And obviously, I mean, we all know your kidneys produce urine, right? So that's that's the obvious function. But they're, they're also important in, in producing your red blood cells. They're also important in controlling your blood pressure, in maintaining your bone health. They, they produce and interact with a variety of hormones to interact with different systems so tremendously important organs now you say that and i, I, I know a few of them but i never heard about the bone health so we may come back to that as well oh, but but but, but mr nanku the yes, when, when when you talk about kidney recipient support group of trinidad and tobago what is that overall mandate because yes you spoke about interacting and we want to talk about some of the stakeholder relationships in terms of like how you get on to people a little further in the conversation. But when you say, okay, well, this group is here, what is your overall mandate? Well, when, what, our overall mandate is to assist persons through the journey after they receive their, their kidneys, right? Um, from that period going forward, we try to uh, aid in where we can create awareness as well. Um, to make persons aware of the need to, um, you know, donate 
and stuff like that. Um, on the recipient side of things, what we do is that we assist in uh, create, creating awareness within our team how to continue protecting the kidneys that you have because now you have an additional, um, you have someone else's kidney in the sense that is either deceased or alive donor that you got, right? And um, so from providing for medication, uh, as, uh, awareness where if the pharmacies don't have them, we collaborate on how we can um, help persons mm -hmm. go through getting those things. Um, we raise awareness as well. Recently, we had our um, kidney, uh, kidney day celebrations at uh, Napa and Sapa and stuff like that. Uh, we also reach out to uh, persons in general public through malls and stuff like with um, those uh, outlets. Um, so we try to raise awareness to help persons come forward and sign up to maybe be a part of our team in the growing of the awareness of the need for a kidney. And, and you the, spoke... the need to protect your, your kidneys in that sense. Okay, we're going to talk a little more about protecting your kidneys, uh, but you spoke about reaching out to individuals when, well, after they've received the transplant. Do you reach out to individuals who know, okay, well, yes, I have, I have issues with my kidneys to the point where, um, okay, even if you're talking about renal failure, and I need this transplant for me to maintain a certain sort of existence. Do you, and, but, and so they're in the process of getting transplant done. Do you interact with individuals before they have that kidney transplant? Um. And, and yes, yes, we do. Uh, those that, that, that are aware of the group, they and they reach out to members within the, the team, we do try to have conversations with them and assist them and guiding them to the directives because we can't give medical advice, right? Um, so we send them to the, the relevant doctors and, and the, the different teams. So in that, we, we liaise with them and guide them as to how they can proceed. Um, on our team, we have a few recipients as well within the planning committee um I, I myself am a recipient and i was met there when i was trying to go through the process of um doing the the getting my myself on board to do my transplant so yes um that that's one of the ways we do it we reach out and we have a chat with them but we guide them to where they need to to have a proper conversation with doctors like dr white um and getting the proper guidance as to how they should proceed no, you say that, Mr. Nanko, and my poor Sir Teresa, because I think it's one thing to know something theoretically, but it's another thing to be speaking with somebody who has gone through the process and said, okay, well, this worked <laughs> for me. This is something that you want to be mindful of. This is something that you want to be careful with. Make sure that you do this, the way you regulate yourself the way you're supposed to. But, Dr. White, I want to ask, though, because some, it seems as though some diseases know, okay, well, there's a weakness here, so let me attack here. Uh, are there any different levels of data that you all have been receiving about individuals with kidney issues during coming out of the pandemic? No, no. So I, I don't know that um, we've encountered any particular issues coming out of the pandemic. But just, I mean, kidney disease affects anyone, um, any age. Um, of course, it's the older population that's more at risk, but anyone is potentially uh, vulnerable. So it, it's important for everybody to be aware of that, to be aware that you can't live without kidney function. You know, you, once your kidneys have failed, you need a, a solution. Um, and and that's, that's what we're here to promote, you know, awareness, not only to look out for the disease, but to know that there are solutions and we want to be a part of that solution. And we want to talk about some of those solutions. When we return, we are speaking with Dr. Kimani Waik as well as uh, Mr. Nanku. This is Mr. Vijay Nanku. Stay with us. We'll return with so much more. Welcome back. We are speaking about kidney health, trying to raise awareness. We're doing so with a member of the Kidney Recipient Support Group of Trinidad and Tobago, Vijay Nanku, as well as Dr. Kimani White, um, Medical Director of the National Organ Transplant Unit. And we want to get a little information about the unit, please, Mr. N Mr. M Dr. White, in terms of when did it open, how many transplants have been taken, uh, well, have taking place thus far, and other information about the unit, thanks. 
Right. So, so this is a, a national unit. We serve, um, even though it's now centered in the Eric Williams Medical Sciences Complex on the DNCRH, it's a national service. Um, it's been functioning since about 2006. Um, we partnered with local organizations, local surgeons, international organizations, and um, we are one of the most successful units in the English-speaking Caribbean. So to date, we've done up to 211 transplants, and we have a couple more queued up for the next couple of months. What are some of those factors that you take into consideration to say, okay, well, we think this one will work. We think this can add, take us past 211 in, on, on the positive sides of transplants. Yeah, yeah, so modern medicine and, and the whole transplant science is, is very advanced now. Um, it's an extremely rigorous process. It's an extremely, uh, you know, regulated process as well. Uh, we make sure and dot all the I's, dot all the T's to, to get it right. And um, so far, we have been very successful at it. You know, um, I have to say our, our outcomes are on par with the international organization. So I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. We're very happy to be able to facilitate the, the, the dissemination of this knowledge. And Mr. Nanku, now that you, you helped to kind of make out yourself, I want to fasten your business a little bit in terms of well, what are some of the things going through your mind when you say, okay, well, this is the process that I need to do. And even before you are part of the support group and saying, this is what I did. This is how the support group actually helped me. So uh, when I when I was contacted, um, it was through one of our colleagues, uh, the late uh, Mr. Furrows. Um, may his soul rest in peace. He passed through the COVID time. Um, when, when I was contacted, he, he introduced me to himself. He gave me some guidance as to what I should look out for, how I should continue maintaining my diet and stuff like that. Um, when I became part of the team, what I noticed was the family environment that was created through the group. Um, they made me comfortable uh, being a part of the team, as well as what was shared was the fact that um, medicine, when we don't have, or like we can't get any the pharmacy where we could share amongst each other in the sense of, and, and within the proper um, prescriptions, right? So. It's not like we share in each other drugs. It's just uh, it's some, we are all on, on immunosuppressants. So some of us have 5MG, some of us has, um, sorry, 0.5MG, 1MG, those sort of things. So persons who can't have or don't uh, haven't gotten to last them because we need to be on these medications constantly. Um, we, we are able to share those, those things. Uh, by that, you know, it gave me a sense of relief that there was a somebody there to help me through the process of becoming or moving away from a dire situation, now to having a new interaction in my life, now to moving to somewhere where it's comfortable, I can speak to other persons of familiarity. Yeah? And you, you speak about family, so thank you for that. You speak about family. Uh, is it important, how, how important is it that members of your family kind of go through this with you, okay, well, you know, this is what you're supposed to be doing at this time. So there's someone else who has that knowledge who can provide those kind of resources, just reminding you, have you done this? Have you taken a point five? Have, uh, how important is that? Uh, that, that? That's very important. Even even some of us who have been, uh, been through dialysis before even reaching the recipient stage, um, you know, we have to be on a specific meal diet, less sodium, you know, restrictive um, foods uh, because our body is no longer processing and, and getting rid of the, 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 the bad stuff um, through the kidneys. is not getting filtered because we don't have a kidney um, in the dialysis. So it starts from there. And when we do end up with a new kidney, we still have to maintain it because you don't want to end up back in a situation where you just got a gift of life and you throw it away. So maintaining a, a diet, a, a proper water intake, we need to, you know, drink the liters. Um, you, do your, keep your diet, your less salt, see, visit your dietitians yeah, more often than not. And, you know, maintain that lifestyle, exercise. Exercise is an important thing with us. We need to get out there and, and help the body filter through sweat. Um, so that, that's, you know, how it is.
All right, so I want to thank you so much for that. We have about three minutes, gentlemen. I need to get information, contact information from you. But before that, Dr. White, we've spoken about it, but what are the incremental steps that someone goes through to go about getting a transplant? To, to get a transplant? Yes, thank you. So, so um, what we, the, the first thing we want um, is we want donors. <laughs> so it, it's promoting that, that altruistic uh, nature in all of us. Uh, I mean, Mr. Nanku said it, it it's, it's the gift of life and you don't know whose life you'll be saving. So the first thing we want is to promote that awareness in people that, you know, um, this is important. This is something that, that you should all be a part of, you know. Uh, so get in contact with the unit and see how you can become a donor. Um, the step in working someone up. So obviously we're talking about someone who has whatever established kidney disease. So we expect them to be referred to our center. And from the center, they're interviewed by our social workers. Uh, they're met with our, our transplant coordinators who gradually go through all of the steps with them. It's an extremely rigorous process. Uh, it's to make sure that they have the right support, that they are in the right place, mentally, psychologically, physically, emotionally, etc. And then, of course, there are the blood tests to, you know, assess their health, their strength, and so on. And then finally, it's the the, the cross matching, you know, making sure that the they will, you know, not react to the the transplant that has been gifted to them. Uh, and then, you know, even leading up to that, that's just one part of the process. As as Mr. Man Nanku will say, you know, the surgery is is just half of the game. You know, it goes on much longer after that. So. We, we like to think of, of these patients as part of our family. And I'm sure Mr. Nanku knows everybody in the unit by their first name, you know. So yes. it's, it's like a big extended family. And that gift of life and that family, those words that keep repeating. But gentlemen, let me get contact information for you, please, uh, for the Kidney Recipient Support Group of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Nanku. How do we reach out? How do we find out what the organization is doing? Okay, so um, we do have a social site, a social media site on, on our Facebook. Um, it's a kidney recipient group. Um, so it's there, I think it's on the screen. And um, you can reach any of the members, or you can reach myself at 349 5595. And um, I just, just need to get a contact information here. Forgive me, gentlemen. I'm just trying to reach the correct number for you all. Not a yeah, problem. And while, okay. while you're getting that number, Dr. White can also share the, the information for the unit. Thank you. Right. So the unit is housed at the Eric Williams Medical Sciences Complex. So 225-4673. And I'll take you to the operator. And you ask for the organ transplant unit. There's also a direct line. I believe it's 663-1703. All right, thank you so much. And we will share the information in our caption and, and as we continue. But gentlemen, thank you so much, Mr. Vijay Nanku, Dr. Kimani White, trying to raise some awareness about kidney transplant, kidney health, because it makes sense to be healthy first as opposed to going on to the later stages. But this has been in depth on behalf of the entire TTT news team. I'm DK Ronster. Thank you so much for joining us.